I'm Sherry Horner, your host at healthfitnessbroadcast.com. And today we are speaking with Art Costello. He is from Austin, Texas. He joins us from, and he is a coach helping families, professional athletes, and business owners. And he is also the author of Expectation Therapy, his newest book. So we're going to talk about that today. Welcome to the show, Art. Thank you, Sherry. So you have helped thousands and thousands of people. Uh, later, I want to talk about your coaching program, your group coaching phone program. And uh, But now I want to talk about this, Expectation Therapy. It was a great book. Uh, it's uh, really to the point, but it, it makes you think. It makes you think. So uh, let's talk about expectations. And, and I want to talk about realistic expectation versus lowered expectations because you talk about that in the book so if we could get, like get right to that because a lot of people and then i want to talk about the expect oh there's so much to talk about i want to talk about the expectations of others so mm -hmm. let's start with um realistic and lowered expectations so what do you say about that our expectations uh what how we uh, view them are through either faith or fear, and faith isn't always about uh, a religious sense. It can be faith in a coach, can be faith in your parents, but most importantly, faith in yourself that you move forward. So when we uh, when we approach our expectations, our perception of how we view them is really what's so important. And if we uh, let ourselves negative we're we're gonna there's a lot in the i think it was henry ford that said uh, uh you ex, what you expect you get and uh, what you expect you achieve so that is really how expectations uh control us if we let the expectations of others uh take over for us then it moves us away from what our expectations are and the and the ability to really achieve in yourself what what is uh, necessary to increase performance in education, athletics doesn't matter in life, relationships, family, everything. It, it affects everything because an expectation is the seed of all creativ creativity in our lives, in our thoughts and actions. An action or a uh, expectation without a uh, action is merely a thought. Yes, yes, that's true. So, um, with realistic expectations, and, and like speaking about business owners that you you work with a lot in pro athletes, um, the expectation of being the best, the top in your field, uh, versus lowered expectations um, that you talk about in the book. Um, where is the realistic <laughs> where's the middle of the road like what would be like unrealistic and then what would be lower i mean where when do we know like okay i can't i'm not capable of going for the ultimate that that's that's a really good question because what we as humans do is bite off too big a pieces that's in the right. in in our expectations when you move through your expectations you have to do it realistically. You have to expect what you can achieve at that time and then raise the expectation at each level. So you're constantly evaluating your expectations. We do it thousands and thousands of times a day without ever realizing it, which is why we fall into this pattern of either not moving forward or you know, as we recognize in some great athletes and business owners, they have learned how to master their expectation and move along incrementally so they achieve that greatness that they desire because we have no limits as long as we don't let ourselves get discouraged. That's why when we look at our expectations as a learning experience and not as this grandiose uh, goal that sets way out in, in the universe somewhere, if we take our expectations and see them from what they are, which is the driving force of our creativity, use it as a learning experience, you'll never fail. You cannot fail if you're learning something. So I have always in my life used my expectations to just catapult me incrementally higher and higher and higher. 
I hope to be 135 when I die so I can achieve what, I, what I've what i set out to do in my That's life. Right. And you have achieved a lot. Um, you were in Vietnam. Um, you've gone through so many situations that have, have made you who you are and capable of doing what you do to help others. Um, but let's talk about other people's expectations and your childhood. Uh, if you don't mind, you talk about that in the book, um, not being especially bonded with your mother or father. Um, and then the expectations of other people that others put on us, um, like your teacher, your coach, your parents, other people expect you to be a certain person in the society. Um, I think you I wrote this down, uh, living up to, this is a quote from your book, living up to others' expectations. Um, and then, um, like, T-shirts. I was, it made me think about what other people expect of you and how, especially when you're small, and you talk about the age from, you know, birth to five years. When you see small kids with T-shirts that say, here comes trouble, you know, and they're already labeled in others put titles on you so that's what I'm getting at if you right. can elaborate on that when uh, I, I just read a really interesting t statistic uh, and that is that 90% of all inmates they're either a parent or a teacher told them they were going to end up in jail it's astounding the statistics so what happens is when you're told that and you hear it on a consistent basis, you internally believe it. So that's why when I'm a big proponent of teaching expectations to children at a very young age, because if they can understand and have the emotional intelligence uh, to know how to separate what their expectations are from the expectations of others and how others present expectations to them. I'm actually going to do a coloring book for children, uh, awesome. for children on expectations so we can start teaching them at a very young age because I believe, I, I, I honestly cannot tell you how I know, but when I was a young child, everybody didn't think I would ever amount to anything and I rose above it and I believe it was through faith, but I believe also that I had the internal knowledge somehow I, I developed it somehow to know it didn't matter what other people told me i was going to be it only mattered to me in the actions i took which is a essential ingredient of expectation therapy or our expectations is taking action but you have to have faith in yourself you have to have faith in somebody or something other than i believe in a higher power mm -hmm. uh so it, Whatever you choose, that's not my my concern because that's a personal thing that you do. So, uh, but I want people to know you've got to have that, and if you've got to choose your words carefully with children because the littlest things we can say can have the most profound impact on their lives. Uh, I'm living proof of it. Uh, I can remember my uh, sixth grade history teacher told me, "You are brilliant." One thing out of my, my elementary school education that I remember is him saying that I believed it before it, he ver verified it that I was brilliant and I believe that I am brilliant and that I'm here to change the world. It took me 67 years to get to this point, but I'm here. <laughs> so regardless of what others said to you, contrary to that, you still heard that voice in your head. You are brilliant. So if you can help um, and elaborate on this, how we can uh, put that positive title on ourselves and hear that voice in our head, even if we don't hear it from anyone else, from childhood to adulthood, whether you're a pro athlete or a novice athlete, whether you're a business owner, um, or whether you're in charge of your family. Um, but I want to talk about, a, you mentioned Muhammad Ali uh, in the, his book. <laughs> I mean, not his book, but a book about him. Um, and uh, actually, he's from Louisville. I know you know that, so I'm from uh, Louisville, too. <laughs> There's a street named after him and the Muhammad Ali um, Center there. So it's, it's 
awesome. If you ever go there, you have to visit the Muhammad Ali Center. It's totally awesome. But he always said, I um, am the greatest. And you talk about this in the book. And you know how he said, I am the greatest. I am the greatest. And he kept putting that title on himself. And then others put the title on him. So how can we, and, and he even, um, there's another quote that I, I hear his voice saying, I'm going to show you how great I am. You know, so uh, how can we do that? How can anyone watching this that has some self-doubt, um, how can they, what kind of system can they ad adapt or adopt to do that there? That's really very simple. I think that first you have to identify, and that's one of the in, uh, really important ingredients of expectation therapy and how I work. It's uh, identify. I suggest that people go to some place that they find totally relaxing, uh, stress-free, be themselves. I don't care if you get naked and stand on a mountaintop, if that's where you find that peace in yourself, that you can really examine your mind and what you want. So about being mindful, then clarify it. I mean, go through it. Go through it, go through it, go through it, and make sure it's where it's at. And then solidification part of it is where you actually write out a plan. I tell people to write out a plan to get there. So if you don't think highly of yourself, I would suggest that you go through the process, write it down the things that you love about yourself, and then pick one and start reinforcing it with, I am the greatest. I am. It's powerful. When you start visualizing it and visualize where you're at, uh, I always tell athletes, if you're running a 100-yard dash, imagine getting across that finish line in uh, 9.2 and, and hearing the crowd uh, and just remembering it and just going for it and letting it loose and just powering through it. And it's amazing what the human mind will uh what it can uh, conceive, it can achieve. Mm -hmm. And if you'll keep on reinforcing it, it's about reinforcing the goodness in yourself and the power in yourself and who you can be and who you want to be because you can become anything you want. I'm living proof of it. No one would ever thought I wrote a book, would write a book. I mean, I've done, I've done anything I've attempted in my life. I've always used this process to get through it. So I know that people can do it. They just have to believe. Right. They have and to believe it that down. it works. That's a good thing. Writing it down. Um, and I've read before that if you, how would you talk when people get into the negative self-talk? Um, they're asked, how would you talk to your friend if he or she was feeling low? Um, you would uplift them and say positive things about them. So say that about yourself. But when you're talking about writing it down, if you write it down as if you were a friend talking to you and say, you are a good mother, you are effective at work, you are, you know, um, whatever that you need to hear, you know, to make yourself feel better and read that over and over again. You talk about reinforcing it. So breathing on a daily basis. I mean, do it do it on a minute by minute basis it only takes a second to run that you know if something if anything adverse happens in my life i always go back in my head to i'm a good person that you know that wasn't about me that was about them that was you know if somebody comes at me uh really mad and stuff i know that it's not me it's them and I try to, that's where the emotional intelligence comes in, of knowing your emotions and, and being able to intelligently define them and recognize them and move through the process. That's really important. I mean, emotional intelligence, I'm a huge fan, yeah. you know, and positive psychology both. So You have uh, so many great things in this book. Um, expectationtherapy.com is his website, but I will have uh, a link, the link below too, so you can get in touch with him and ask him any questions. But I want to ask now about your group coaching program, because you're in Austin, Texas, but you travel all over for speaking engagements. And what about the, the group calls or the phone calls, the individual, how does that work? They, they can go to my website and we're actually in, the, we're going to change it up a little bit uh, to make it more accessible. We're going to do a video series 
uh, to help people go through that. So the website's going to change a little bit, but they can go to my website and sign up for one of these courses. I try to make it all affordable. I want it to be for everybody. Uh, I want everybody to tell everybody about it because I really, in my heart, my passion is to let people know that they can change their lives. It's not hard. We have complicated our lives and we think that we have to go through this huge psychological process to change things. Mm -hmm. We don't. They're very simple. It's in the book. It's, it's going to be taught on the websites through the videos. Uh, I do individual counseling on select uh, basis because of my time schedule, but I'm always here. Uh, we're going to open up a forum for communication on the website uh, so more people can uh, ask questions and we can answer them. Uh, for me, it's about helping as many people as I can. Uh, when My speaking engagements will be up on the website where you'll be able to come and hear me speak. Uh, speak at a lot of different places. Uh, yeah, I just, you're hard to get a hold of. You're always on the on the road. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's I, um, I want to ask you if there's uh, one or two more tips that you can give anyone watching that needs to set their expectations a little higher day by day, step by step. What would it be? In the beginning, write your expectations down. What you want to achieve for that day, and then just plan your actions to achieve them. And they'll, they will come to fruition. Understanding that each and every time that you go through an event, it's a learning experience that is building you into who God wants you to be, who the universe wants you to be. Because we're all different. We all have different ideas and actions. But if you write them down, you work towards them incrementally, they'll happen. Just take each step of that as a learning experience. You'll never fail. You'll always move forward. And in the end of the day, you'll be very proud of yourself, who you are. And it will absolutely transform those people around you. When you are responsible for you and not other people, when you take responsibility for yourself and move forward with the expectation of greatness, You'll never, ever have to worry about having negative friends around you. You will be the catalyst for change in your community, in your circle of friends, in your family, in your church group, in your athletic group. Uh, whether you play with the Boston Celtics, the Los Angeles Dodgers, or the Memphis Grizzlies, or whoever it is, if you just take that little bit of positivity and high expectation, it goes like wildfire in organizations. It's it moves that. things forward. And yeah. business owners, business owners, set the expectation for your business. What the conduct is going to be, what your goals are for your company, what they are for your employees. Keep them realistic, but move. Write them down. Have the company move forward. Uh, great book out right now. <laughs> it's not mine, but it's called Thirteeners by Dan Posser. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's well, good for business good owners. If you write it down so the entire company knows your vision and your mission, um, and they're not just there to show up and do whatever, they're on the same page mentally, working toward the same goal. Um, in your book, you also write, um, you are whom you hang out with. Uh, so you're talking about making a change in your community. Um, you are who you hang out with, and it's harder to make a change if you're hanging out with the people who are doing the same things that are getting you in the same place. <laughs> yeah, you won't move forward if you hang with the same. You, it, it, the idea is if you love your friends, motivate them to change with you. Yeah, get them nice. to get them to change with you because you can be a catalyst for a whole society. And I've no seen one. that over the years. I've seen that so many times when people have lost a lot of weight and then they're on a healthier lifestyle and then their family starts slowly coming around. And you lost 110, how many pounds did you lose? 100? 103. 103. Okay, so I want to ask you if you'll come back in the future and we'll talk about your weight loss success story and you can tell us how you did that step by step to um, help motivate and inspire others. I absolutely will. I, Sherry, you can have me back anytime. I, <laughs> I, I love talking to, talk to you. <laughs> I, I know that your story will, will definitely motivate others. 
Uh, but before we go, Art, I want to ask you to show, share your shoe, because I believe a shoe tells a lot about a, pe a person. And tell me what your shoe is and why you like it so much. This is my sandal. Here, that over I, here, we can't see it. There you go. Now you got it. After I, after I take my cowboy boots off, <laughs> my this is my solace for my body. I am so comfortable in my sandals, uh, whether it's lounging around at the house or going out to the ranch in the evening. I like to sit up and prop my feet up, take my boots off, put my sandals on, uh, because it takes me to a place of comfort. Oh, I just yeah. am very comfortable in sandals. I love cowboy boots, but they're you working. Live in but Texas. this is, <laughs> but this is about relaxing. This is about letting your feet hang out, your toes wiggle, and just letting your mind go where it ever wants to go. A, a cowboy so. sandal. I like what you said. Instead of saying they're so comfortable, you say it takes you to a place of comfort. I love that. I love that. I'm, I'm going to steal that from you, and I'm going to use it often. <laughs> Takes you to the place of comfort. Well, I have a shoe for today, and it is another Nike. Love it. I love the, the hot pink, uh, and then it has the mesh over the um, hot pink, and I don't know if you can see that real well, but love it. Love it. So, another Nike. I love it, too. Love Nikes. Thank you so much, and I look forward to you coming back because you're going to share that weight loss success story. And um motivate a lot of people. Thank you so much. Expectationtherapy.com. I'll have a link below. Take care. We'll see you.